Okay, in this question here, we're going to take a look at how we find the missing value for a constant in a trinomial such that um, the expression would be factorable as a uh, what's called a, a perfect square. Um, so we call this a perfect square trinomial. So the first thing before we look at this question is just to kind of um, take a step back and understand what a perfect square trinomial is. So if you had this expression x squared minus 6x plus 9 and you attempted to factor this into a product of two binomials okay two terms um, we would find that we could say okay x squared is going to be simply x times x and now the rule is is that we need to find two factors that we multiply to give us negative 9 but also when we sum them will give us a, a middle term of negative 6. Okay, so it just so happens that the two factors that work are going to be minus 3 in both, um, both expressions. Because if we were to use FOIL to, um, to re-expand this term here, okay, the x times x would give us the x squared. The x times negative 3 would be negative 3x. And then we have to do the other term. Okay, so that's going to be x times um, negative 3 and then... Then we have the neg negative 3 times negative 3 um, is equal to positive 9. So FOIL would give us that term. So we could then just simply write that this expression is equal to x minus 3 squared, which is what they're referring to as a perfect square trinomial. So the question is, is that if we aren't given the, the full expression, what, what, are, what do we actually do to work backwards if we have to um, arbitrarily put in a value um, in this case, the value C, which would make this a perfect square trinomial. So if we look at the pattern for this, we find that um, the two factors that we uh, that multiply to give us positive 9 is equal to negative 3 in this case. Okay, and 3 um, is essentially half of 6. Okay, so 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And then we, when we, we square that term, 6... Um, 6 divided by 2 being negative 3, and when we square it, that gives us the, um, the positive 9. Okay, so what we could do is we can look back. I'll just erase this question here. We can look back and um, <clears throat> look at what we could do to find this value here of C. Okay, so what we know is that if whatever this value is, C, if we um, took, if we take half of the middle term, Okay, and then square it. So the middle term here is negative 16. So if we divide that by 2, okay, that's going to give us a negative 8. But then if we square that term, that will give us, let's just write it out in full here, that will give us 64. Okay, so <clears throat> the question is, is, would six, is 64 the number that would go in for the letter C? So what we could do is we can just try it. So x squared minus 16x plus 64 okay and then we factor the two out we are going to have two factors that multiply to give us <clears throat> plus 64 but add to give us negative 16. well we know 64 is one of those it's a squared um, perfect square number so the two factors that work are going to be minus 8 and minus 8. okay so in this case uh, if we were to do foil and reverse it Okay, you would see that x times x is x squared, x times negative 8 is negative 8, and then we get to carry the negative 8 over to here, and that <clears throat> summing the two negative 8s together would give us the negative 16. So it appears the pattern is, is what you do is you take half of the middle term, which in this case is negative 16, so you divide that number by 2, and then you square it, and that equals the last term. Okay, so that would be the, um, the way that you would do all these types of questions. Okay, I'll leave the la uh, part B for you to try, but what I can do is we'll do another example here with just of a different problem. So if I give you x squared plus 5x <clears throat> plus c, and we want to know what number for c would make this a perfect square trinomial, okay, what we would do is we would take the middle term, so in this case it's going to be plus 5, Okay, we divide that by 2, and then we square it. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, uh, it doesn't turn out to be a, a, an integer value, but 
plus five halves squared is going to give us 25 over four. So if we were to factor this question, okay, our product of binomials, we would have X in each bracket in each term. We know our last number here is gonna be 25 <coughs> fourths. Okay, that was the number for C. So we would take the square root of that. So it would be plus five over two plus five over two, okay? So C is equal to this value, okay? But the factors that we get is going to be the square root of that value, okay? And if we apply FOIL, you'd see that this would work because if we were to expand this question, um, we would have X times X, which is X squared. Now we would have X times five halves, which is five halves X. Now we have to do it for both terms. Okay, and then we would multiply the last term, which is gonna be 24, 25 over four. Okay, now five halves is two and a half, right? So two and a half plus two and a half is equal to our middle term of five. So x squared would be x squared plus five x plus 25 over four. Okay, so the missing term here would be 25 over four, and that would make it into a perfect square um, trinomial. Okay, so hopefully that, that helps, it clarifies it. It's just all you're doing here is you're taking the middle term, you're dividing it by two, um, and it's important to carry the sign forward if you want uh, to, to have that. So if it's negative or positive, you square it, and the squared number will always be that last term. Okay, and that, so the answer to this question is that's the value of C that we're looking for. But just remember that we can put that into a factored form um, which is in this case x plus the, a certain number times x plus another number. Okay, and those two would have to be the same um, like you see in the examples here. Okay, so hopefully that uh, clarifies it and makes a little more sense.